everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist instructor. Today I'll be showing you how to paint this fantasy teapot house. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. I've kind of got an idea of what my teapot is going to look like and I want to somehow make it look like a moss covered fantasy little house and I'm not sure at this point what I'm going to add but you guys know what the finished piece looks like from seeing the thumbnail that brought you here to this video. So I'm going to walk you guys through this step by step, explain everything I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how to blend, which brushes to use, mixing colors and all that. So stay tuned. This is going to be a really, really fun one full of color and imagination. Hit subscribe and let's get started. So I'm just going to go over the colors that I'm using today for this painting. So I've got titanium white, Mars black, cadmium yellow, cool, burnt sienna, light blue violet, neon pink, orange, and yellow, cool. So I'm going to start by creating just a beautiful colorful background. I'm going to mix the colors around with uh, one of my oval mop brushes. This is a one inch. It's a little bit wet. I want it wet so that I can easily blend all the colors around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a bit of white first and I'm just going to dab it here so I uh, make sure I get some lighter, softer tones and just kind of wherever, just little patches of white here and there. Remember that colors, acrylic paint and these bright colors are going to dry a lot more intense um, than they look like as they're going on wet. So I'm going to start with my yellow, my neon yellow cool, and I'll add that all around here. And, and just be carefree with where you add your colors. You can really change it up and add your colors wherever you want. This is just how I'm approaching it right now. I'll add a little bit more, make it a little bit more intense down here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is come in with my neon orange without washing my brush off. And a little bit of pink now. These fantasy paintings are so much fun to create that I'm doing more and I'm filling up my channel this month all January long with fantasy paintings because I just think that it's we need more lighthearted um, energy. We need to feel happier and color really does that and kind of just getting back to finding our inner child and that all that creativeness and no fear feeling is a really good Thing to have right now we all need that so I'm hoping to bring that to you guys through my channel and through all these fun videos so you can see I'm just starting to bring in some blue now at this stage I'm gonna wash my brush off because I want to create more of a turquoise color here and I'll be unable to do that with all the orange and pink in my brush so I'll switch over to another blending brush Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and some of that yellow. I'll switch over to a softer brush. This one's just going to be a little bit easier to blend out. Take a little bit of that yellow and white. blue, yellow, and white. So you can, of course, just use turquoise if you have turquoise already. You're going to get a, a different shade than what I've got here. I'll take a little bit more yellow and white now. I just cleaned my brush off. I got the excess uh, paint out of there. And I think I'm happy with it just like this, so I'm going to leave it. 
the next thing I want to do is just start coming in with right away with the outline and shape for my teapot. So I like to use a filbert brush, a smaller one, um, for painting things that have a lot of curves to them and kind of round edges. These are really nice. I can also use the width of it to blend and kind of scumble around. This one's a number four. You can use anything a little smaller or even a little bit bigger, um, but I've got a nine by 12 canvas I'm working on today. So I'm gonna keep my brushes a little bit on the smaller side. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started now. So what I'm gonna do is um, paint this in black first. Now the paint under here is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna take my black and I'll just simply start right down here Pull a little line down here at the bottom. This is gonna be the base of our teapot. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker, a little bit wider at the bottom, and then bring it up about a quarter of an inch to half an inch here. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you however you want to, to make it. And then I'm just gonna add a circle. Okay, that's all I'm gonna think about right now is just a circle. Okay, and I'm gonna paint that circle in, adding a little bit of water to my brush. You can see I'm picking up the wet paint from underneath, so it's making it a little bit gray. Doesn't matter. We're gonna be coming over with our moss and our windows and everything else that we're gonna add here. So it's fine to have this be the first layer. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is from here to here. Let's just make a line right there. And I'm gonna go curve up here to here. Take a little bit more black. I'll do that again. The same thing on that side. And then we're gonna, from here, come out, pull it in, and there will be our little teapot spout. A little line across the top. Let me just get my brush a little bit wet and I can do that a little bit more clearly. And then a line. Okay, and then just go ahead and paint that in and we'll continue along. I'm going to start to exaggerate this now. to bring this out a little bit wider so it's more like an oval now okay so if you break it down into little sh shapes like that simplifies it a lot okay and now we'll just go across the top And then we'll paint that in. And then we're going to have our little lid. So we'll start the top here. Over, down and out, down and out.
and then I'll have a little dab on the top just for a little handle a little handle for our lid and don't spend too much time trying to get everything just perfect because it's going to be covered with moss and stuff anyways so I, like, I'm not worried about um, edges that aren't uh, really tidy and clean. Okay, now we're going to come up and loop down for the other handle. Just like that. We'll bring it down, widen it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit more water here. Pull, curve, and come around. Okay, and then down here we'll have a little grassy area. I'll just take a little bit of my cadmium yellow, not the neon one, just the regular one. And we'll just add a grassy area here. up a little bit of water, loosen some of that paint out of my brush. I don't know if you guys saw um, my um, pumpkin little cottage that I did. It was really fun. I wouldn't say that it's, I mean, it's not really Halloween but you could definitely, it's a, a really fun um, fall-ish vibe to it with little pumpkins and and a cute little cottage. So I'll leave a link below for my fantasy playlist if you guys uh, enjoy watching fantasy art and like to paint fantasy. It's my favorite. So I'm just adding a little bit more of that yellow now, a little bit thicker and I'll just go right above here too I'm probably gonna add some little bushes and maybe some flowers and stuff we'll see so I've got another um, angle mop brush here this is a one inch I'm gonna use this for my larger areas and then I'll use a filbert brush for my narrower areas so I'm going to make a dark green by taking some cadmium yellow and mixing it with a little bit of black. This is a nice olive, deep olive green that I want to use. We've got lots of pretty bright colors around the background, so I think this is a nice earthy balance, a nice shade of green to add. So I'm just going to start coming along the top. I can fit this in here, but if you feel more comfortable, use a smaller brush. These angle um, mop brushes come in a set of makeup brushes that I get um, on Amazon. If you're curious, uh, I'll try to remember to leave a link. I've got lots of links on my Facebook groups as well and uh, in the description area of other videos. Okay, so now I'm gonna come down um, the rest of the teapot. And I'll see if I can make it around this edge. Yeah, actually, that looks really cool. So I thought that I was going to need um, a smaller brush, but so far, so good. So at the top here, I'm holding it like this. And then I'm going to start to go down straight and then again this this direction but here it changes a little bit to come down okay and I'll just cover the rest up I want to slightly go over always the outline of the teapot giving it that foliage look so it just looks like 
It's a big, giant, mossy teapot house. Okay, I'm gonna squish my brush flat like that. I'm gonna add a little bit right there. And then just follow the shape. And I'll add a little bit on the top as well. A little bit of green, a little dab. So that'll dry a little bit darker. Okay, using another mop brush. This is a round one. I'm only using this one because it's dry and my angle brush is wet. Otherwise, I would just use that if I had another one. So I'm going to make uh, some highlights here to make this look more 3D and give it some light hitting some edges. So where it pops out and it's round here in the front, that's where I'll concentrate on adding some. I'm going to stay away from my black right now. I'm going to just go into my yellow with a little bit of white. And then I'm gonna tap, tap, tap to keep that nice round shape. So I'll add a little bit of highlights here. Just on the top like that, and then some around the edge. And I'm going to take more yellow. By using more yellow and less white, it'll dry a little bit darker. also want to have some little bushes down below so I'm going to go back into my black right away with my yellow and white and I'll have a few little bushes down here leading up to the door so I'm going to apply it wider down here and then narrower going into like a V right into the the base there Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is switch over to my number four filbert again. I'm just going to tap this off a little bit. It's still a little bit wet. So I'm just going to tap that to give it a little bit more foliage texture. And I'm going to go into my black. And I'm going to just make some scoops like this. scallops or scoops come around the edge just a little dab here and there or a little bit more shadow well this is so much fun you guys I hope you're enjoying this too okay a little bit down here underneath a little bit just underneath here and I'm going to just add a little loop right here for the spout
Okay, now I'm going to add the door. And I'm going to add black first. And I think I'll have, well, I like arches, so I'll add a little arch door right here. And it's easy to do with our, our filbert brush. Then I'm going to take my burnt sienna. And I'm just going to go down in lines. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of light in here just with some little bit of yellow and white. And I'll just back and forth, side to side, smaller up to the, the door and then wider. See how dry my brush is? Here's scumbling, dry brush or scumble. See, see how that kind of draws our eye in there? Now the next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of, little scoop of uh, white and yellow, and I'll start adding some windows, and then I'll add some shutters. So maybe we'll have, let's have a little window right here. I'll keep with the arch theme. We'll have one here, one here, and one here. We'll make this center one just a little bit bigger than the other ones. Okay, and then we can have a window on that side, that side, so they'll be a bit narrower. And then maybe another little one right here. We can have a few little ones up there too. Have a little loft, loft area. Some little bedrooms up top. <laughs> Maybe we'll have one down here. Okay, now I'm gonna come around the sides and add some shutters. So I'm going to use a little bit of black and some burnt sienna. I'm just going to do a few lines. We're going to keep it really simple. No need to fuss. It's just about creating. Little lines on either side and these are cl pretty close together. So for now you can see it just looks like one, but we're going to bring that one up higher. And then when we add some highlights in there, we'll be able to see the separation a little bit better. Okay, we'll come in here. Add a few little shutters there as well. And we'll add a little something up here. There we go. I think we should have some window boxes too. What do you guys think? I'm just going to take a little bit of that burnt sienna. A few window boxes. We'll have one right there. And maybe a little one right here as well. Maybe we'll have a few little planters down here. Just rectangles and squares. Keep it simple. Or maybe a little round, maybe a little round pot right here. So a little line on top, round belly, and then flat bottom. Gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna inside. I want to add some warmth inside the windows now. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, neon yellow cool. This yellow works fine too. I mainly wanted the neon cool uh, for the background, but I have it here, so I'm going to use it. 
a little bit of white, orange, and yellow. Let's just take a little bit more white because I know it's going to dry a little bit darker. You just want like a very inviting shade of peach for the inside. Give um, this teapot some life and warmth and make it a little bit more inviting. I'm going to add a little bit to the top of the window box, just a little bit more of the orange. Pick up some burnt sienna now. Mix those together. A little bit more burnt sienna this time. And now we can come in and add a little bit more on our shutters here. And the door. Our little planters. We we'll need a handle for our door. I'm going to use a liner brush for the handle. This is a number two. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that light window color that we made. And I'll add that on our door handle. I'll try to do that again. It's a little bit tricky when the paint is thicker and wet. Okay, there we go. Start adding some highlights to our flower pot here. And I'm going to take oh, a little bit of black and burnt sienna, water down my brush a little bit. And I'm going to outline the windows. And then I'm going to go cross, cross, both ways. Okay, I'm going to do that to all of them. This one's bigger, so I'll do three lines. One, two, and three. Hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial and following along okay. Let me know below if you have any questions. really helps to have your brush watered down when using a liner because we don't want these really dark because there's all that warm light through there. We've got to give these top windows a little bit of light too. Okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit of orange to my burnt sienna. Tiny bit of white in there. I'm going to warm up the door just a little bit. Just a little bit there. And now we can add some pretty flowers. Maybe a staircase. 
Yeah, while I'm thinking of that, I think this would be a, a great spot for a little staircase. And I'm going to just take, well, we'll just do a little bit of black and green again. I'll have some moss covered stairs, my favorite kind. And we'll just start up. Have it kind of just disappear there. goes around the side. Maybe there's like a staircase that starts from the other side in the back and goes up. And then we'll add a little bit of black. a little bit of, we'll have a little bit of foliage here on the side. Help tuck that in there. Okay, time for some flowers. I'm going to do some yellow first. That's going to dry to a darker green because we're adding it uh, over top of a dark layer of paint and this is transparent this yellow okay then i'm going to take some a little scoop of neon pink and orange and i'm just going to dab just little dabs and we'll do the same thing up top we'll add some flowers first maybe and then a little bit of greenery after. We'll add a little bit there too. A little bit more right there. I think I want to add some here as well. Feels like it's missing something. So I'm going to take my black, green, I'll add a little line and then a few little taps here for some leaves. A little bit more here. Okay, yellow. A little tap, tap, tap. I'm going to go around the door and tap in. I need a little bit of white in there. There, make that door stand out a little bit more. And I think I'll add few little flowers going up the stairs as well. Maybe a few little, so I'm adding a little bit of white here to this now. Just a little bit here and there. Then no white and just little dabs straight pink and orange. That way it'll dry a little bit darker and you'll have a natural looking um, shadow. Okay, now I'm going to make um, another color with my neon pink and my blue violet. Like a really pretty purpley color here. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to start adding 
little bits of it here. Maybe a little bit coming down the edge there. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna go over to my mop brush again and I'm just gonna take a little bit more yellow, a little bit of white. I'll just have a little bit more in there. Back over to my filbert brush. I'm going to take a little bit of pink, orange, yellow, and white. See where I had a little bit of those flower colors come? I picked it up in on my brush, but I'm going to use that because I think it's kind of pretty to add just a little hint of that in here. Remember to widen this out here so it feels like it's, it's uh, inviting us right in here to this painting and into this teapot little teapot house. I'm going to go finish this up quickly. Just add a little bit of a little bit more of that black just at the top of the windows here. It's just going to kind of set them in there a little bit better, I think. Okay, there's one more color that I want to use, and it's my purple violet. This is another neon or luminous one by Holbein. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue again along with this. Let's add some flowers here. I think that they'd probably be hydrangeas in my little teapot fantasy house garden leading up the pathway. Just a little bit up here too. I think that's pretty. A little bit more yellow. I'll just add the last little bit, a little bit of yellow to soften this edge here up. around these little scalloped edges here. Add a little bit more of my, it'll be like a filter, so I'll show you what this looks like once it's dry. more of a pop of color and then around here so we don't get all the same green get some cool greens and some warm greens okay the last thing I want to do I just want to get a tiny bit more detail and break up this solid look that the door has so just with a little bit of white a 
my burnt sienna. There, that's better. Well, I'm going to call this painting all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and that you got inspired. This was so much fun to paint. I can't wait to see uh, how yours turn out. Be sure to tag me in your posts on social media. I love seeing them. Or feel free to join our Facebook groups. I have one specifically for Patreon and monthly challenges that I host for you guys with some awesome prizes. Um, so have a wonderful day. Thanks again for watching and subscribing to my channel. It means a lot. Uh, every time I get a new subscriber, I get really, really excited. So if you want to make my day, hit that subscribe now. Like this video and leave a comment. Take care, everybody. I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!